Today on Roll for Crit, we're going to be reviewing a movie. This is a documentary called The Game Designers, directed by Eric Rail. And we watched this film, and we're going to give you our thoughts and opinions on it. It is all about, as the title would suggest, game designers, their process, what it's like to be a game designer. In particular, it focuses on Matt Leacock, designer of Pandemic, and Antoine Boza, designer of Seven Wonders. But it also highlights some indie designers and has interviews with lots of other designers along the way. And it covers a lot of subjects about their journeys, uh, getting a game made, how they work, how the process works. Well, what did you think about the movie as it pertains to, uh, you know, we're, we're people who are very familiar with the board game world. I'm curious what you think of it as someone who's very well steeped in that universe and versus maybe what you think about someone who is just watching this who wouldn't know anything about uh, board games or just your thoughts on the film in general. Well, I like the fact that the idea of this is it focuses on, I would say, the idea of a game to table from different perspective, not the table to yeah, game, right before it's, manufacturing. Yeah. Idea to product <laughs> a little before product. Okay. <laughs> um, and it focuses on different examples from the person who does a Kickstarter from the person who brings in, tries to sell their idea to different companies to someone who's already well established and they're doing a game that they know they're going to make to a, another big person who really hasn't gone into like, you're making a sequel to a game you've already made. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting to see all these different points of views come uh, come across and how some of them succeed, where some of them fail. Uh, the game, the video itself is almost entirely them talking. There is no narrator that explains things or goes connects the, the stories in a way. It's really just the the five people well, and, and some other people they interview for like very it's a little bits and pieces. Um, yeah, which which I don't mind at all. I think it works uh, pretty well. Um, I I really liked what you said, how they do show you the different aspects. You get to see like the well-established game designers and what they do, as well as people who are just starting out and uh, primarily going through Kickstarter. And, you know, there's the whole unpub thing and taking their games to conventions and even um, like something I don't think I've ever seen before, like gotten to see with my own eyes, which is they show one of them actually pitching their game to AEG in a little meeting, which I think is really fascinating to to get that behind the scenes look. I love seeing stuff like that. I think that's awesome. So yeah, I really enjoyed seeing all of that. And I, I, I felt like this would, this, I think this is a good entry point for even people who don't know anything about board games. I almost wish, you know, they, they opened the movie with Tom Vassell has a, a line about what we, we always say. I think everyone always says, which is when you tell someone about a board game, they always say, Oh, you mean monopoly or Scrabble or whatever. We always complain about that. And I wish that I could now, I feel like I could show those people this movie. And I feel like this is a nice, I mean, maybe they would get, I don't know if they would be as interested in it as I am, but I feel like it presents games in a way that takes them very seriously. And it really, you watch this and you feel like, Oh, all these people are really passionate about these games. This is their career. And it's it really, I think, is a good way to get across that there, this isn't just Monopoly. This isn't just a kid's game. It's not just toys. Like, there's real passion and ingenuity and innovation that goes into these things, hard work that goes into these things. And I think it's awesome that they put that on display. But as just as someone also who maybe already feels all that stuff too, I liked seeing uh, some of this stuff. It certainly doesn't go... Uh, it's not like super deep. It's not like you're going to really get, you get glimpses of notes and things, but it's not like this isn't a, a guide on how to design a game, for instance. Uh, you're not going to get anything like that. But uh, still, I think even on a somewhat more surface level, the interviews and stuff I found pretty, pretty fascinating. I definitely, I definitely felt like I learned some stuff. Interesting. I, I felt a little opposite on a couple of those points. I, the main one being, I think you did need to have some knowledge of board games going into this hmm. uh, because there's no narrator who's explaining like who these are. And like they bring up how Catan changed it, but like that's like midpoint. It doesn't go like board games, you know, they used to be a thing. And, and just from like, I'm, I'm trying to, in my head compared to the other documentary I've seen in particular, I think uh, the ones that in my mind I want to compare to are the, uh, the, the, they initially called the toys that made us, but they have the movies that made us on Netflix where uh -huh. they take a, a product and they talk and they interview all the people who were taking part in that. 
but they uh, I feel like having that narrating role helps the people who don't know anything to be like explain why this is important what's big why is this person is someone who you should care about or shouldn't care about what is Kickstarter you know hmm. yeah um, I, I guess may- maybe you're right maybe I take some of those things for granted I did think in the beginning they they do have a little you know through the interviews they do introduce the idea that you know about these board games, but there's more of a world. Like, I do think there's at least an attempt to immerse you. I don't, it's not like they jump right in and say, no, like, no, no, no. It's not like, I'm not saying like, you need to be a master of board games, but maybe a few I of just, these things I'm, might be a bit over your head. Yeah. I'm questioning whether I could show this to like my parents. I guess know? I'm coming. From they the are pers- monopoly people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm coming from the perspective of someone who I really, enj- I, my favorite thing is to find a documentary about, a world I knew nothing about. I, I like to dive into those and be like, oh, I had no idea this strange poodle tournament existed or whatever it is. That's not a real one. Um, so maybe I guess maybe you ha- maybe people aren't willing to sit down and be like, let me just have this wash over me and be immersed in it. Maybe that I, wouldn't work as well. I don't think it's I think it's fine to go into something new. I just think that you need to have signposts. And I wasn't sure I saw those in there. Hmm. Um, I think it's a fine cause line because I, I also don't like being I don't want to be talked down to you know <laughs> but I, I think there's there is a comfort there's a middle ground I, I think but like I said I still love that it didn't though then because then the issue of that would be the opposite where they like my talk down would be they only focus on the two big designers because they're the big ones I like seeing those more independent people because that's I think where a lot of the nitty gritty of board games happens and that's where all of a sudden you get your you're gloom havens, you know, mm-hmm. you're out of nowhere. And those are, I think are a lot more interesting. And yeah. I would have loved if they did focus maybe in a sequel, they could follow the Kickstarter guy and be like, how, how is the production made going to companies and dealing with them? How do you deal with uh, the Chinese market? Granted, you might want to wait a little while because things are a bit weird right now, but I think that could be another interesting view into the board game world. Yeah, there's no shortage of things they could do uh, with this subject matter. I think something that I maybe would have liked to see a little bit more is I feel like they really focused all the designers they talked about were all um, solo designers, people who mostly worked by themselves. I would have loved to see either collaborations, like maybe a team of two or three, or even going to a place like Wizards of the Coast or Fantasy Flight where they have, you know, like offices and they're, I assume, getting together every day. More of the corporate side as opposed to the people who kind of like kind of work freelance and then pitch their ideas to different companies. I'd be interested to see like the in-house designers, you know, I think that would be an interesting perspective. That would require those companies to agree to it. (laughs) Right. Yeah. To show behind the curtain. Um, uh, But other than that, I mean, that was just something I thought would be more interesting, but I don't think they really lost too much from not seeing it. And Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, there were definitely some stuff that I I think I learned, like I said, from this, for instance, uh, maybe the best asset, I think it seems to designing games, having a 3d printer, that seems like a great, (laughs) great way to go. (laughs) What I really like is, for anyone who is even thinking of like, I want to design a game. They have to like to watch this and be like, okay, I need to get different play testers. Like they bring that up as an important part or how Kickstarter, you know, you're going to, there's a good chance you fail your first one and you're going to find out what you did wrong. Mm -hmm. And then, Oh, maybe I should be pitching. How do I pitch or something? You know, like I think that was really great because I don't think we hear the pitching as much. We hear Kickstarter if you're in the board game world, but you don't usually hear pitching, I think, you, as often. Yeah, yeah, not a, un- unless you're really in the business of it, then you certainly do. Uh, but yeah, that's a huge part of it. Yeah, I loved the playtesting. Just, I loved watching the playtesting scenes. I think it's really interesting to just think about that process of people saying, well, I think this is too complicated or this should be changed. And, you know, them having to decide, well, I worked on that. What do I keep? What do I throw out? Mm -hmm. All that stuff is really fascinating to me. I could, I could watch it forever. Um, And there are a ton of special features for this movie that as far as I know right now, they were exclusive to the Kickstarter uh, you had to back it on Kickstarter. I don't think you can get them anywhere else. So I, I hope I would like my recommendation would be that they at some point uh, let allow you to at least have the chance to pay for those down the line separately because there's hours of extra deleted scenes and there's commentary and all this cut footage and different interviews. There's so much stuff to explore. And I think that's that's really cool. If you are the person who 
likes this subject matter. Uh, it's awesome to be able to dive into that stuff. But the regular basic movie you can watch, it's available on iTunes, Amazon, all these places you can get it on demand right now. We'll put links in the description below. But I would definitely recommend, if you've watched this far in the video, <laughs> then I think <laughs> you absolutely should check it out. I would also compare it to another one uh, from the video game world. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw it. It's called Indie Game the movie. I it's, don't recall that one. It's kind of sim a similar idea, but it follows indie video game designers. I think the guy who made Super Meat Boy, uh, they follow in that one. Uh, uh, and it's, it's a similar kind of trajectory of seeing like the little person working on a little project and seeing how far it goes. So if you like that, I would recommend this as well. Um, but uh, it sounds like, and I think you would recommend this too to most people. Well, I mean, yeah, obviously, I think <laughs> seeing more about it's always good to learn about new board games, play more board games, but I think a lot of people could gain a real benefit of learning like what's behind the scenes because I, th I sometimes, you know, you read comments on Reddit or Kickstarter posts and while I maybe agree with sometimes some of the people who are angry about something, it's, it seems like they don't understand what it takes to actually make something the backseat designing. I think it, it would be nice if you had at least an understanding of how difficult or what it means to do that before you give your suggestions of what they should change. If yeah. that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It's good to have that perspective to, uh, you know, ground yourself a little when you're judging these games <laughs> harshly, <laughs> like we do sometimes. Uh, also, I just thought it was fun to, you know, some, some of these designers, I know their names so well, but I don't always know their faces that well. So sometimes seeing people is like, oh, like that's that's the guy who made a couple of games I really like. So I think yeah, it's fun I, that way, too. Yeah, except that's pretty much with everyone for me. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I don't know that name. And you'd be like, he, he's in all your favorite movies. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, your mileage may vary on how, uh, what your name <laughs> recollection is like. Again, check the description below for links to where you can watch the game designers right now and talk to us in those comments. So let us know what you think about it. Uh, maybe if you tried uh, subjecting your family members or non gamers to this and uh, hear what they think about it, because I'd be I'd be pretty fascinated to hear that perspective, too. That or you can play Monopoly with them. <laughs> yep, it, that's up to you. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm Jonathan. I'm Will. And this is Roll for Crit. We would love it if you liked and subscribed to this channel and supported us on Patreon as well. For legal reasons, we've got to disclose we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter with more awesome content.